Star. Okay, it's the E Star by Navistar. So here we have um, a little view from the back. And we're going to be walking, doing a walk around with Paul Abelson. Hi, Paul. Hi. How Our fleet columnist. So hit it. Well, I just had a very interesting drive from Navistar's engine plant, research plant, up here to Hanley Wood. And uh, I got a chance to drive the E Star in traffic in a uh, urban setting. Uh, it's a very interesting vehicle. For one thing, there are no normal doors. You walk into it, through the cabin, and then go into the driver compartment. Well, that's interesting. So you step up here and you go into the driver's compartment. Correct. All right. Do you want to tell us why that is, or is it not that important right now? It's, it's really the, just the way it's configured. It's, okay. It could be a safety thing. Uh, it's just a, a design configuration at this point. Uh, there, like like any new vehicle, there are a lot of options as to what there might be in, in terms of internal configuration. And this is the kind of thing that a municipality or uh, county or state could use in um, just utility purposes or maintenance vehicles. You're rolling again. So uh, it, there's a great deal of flexibility in how these will be configured. Okay. What I found most interesting in driving it is the acceleration. Now it is limited to 50 miles an hour, but that was no problem in an urban setting. Uh, the acceleration is quite good, comparable to any diesel pickup truck uh, on the low end. Of course, it doesn't have the high end, and I wouldn't take it on the interstate. But um, for what it is and for what it's designed for, it's, it's outstanding. Being electric, you have none of the regular maintenance issues. Uh, lube oil, filter, that type of thing. There are no injectors to clean, no spark plugs to change. So from maintenance point of view, which affects overall life of the vehicle, over 10 years, you're going to be way ahead with this. Uh, the visibility, you can see by the way it's configured. Okay, gotcha. The visibility on this vehicle is excellent. You can see by the deeply curved windshield and the slope of the dashboard uh, how close you can actually you can actually see to the front of the vehicle. Even the wiper uh, has a great sweep to it. It's one single large wiper blade. Uh, oh, that is cool. Mirrors will have to be altered to American standards. These right now are uh, British-type mirrors with full convex glass in okay. both the main and the uh, spot mirror. Uh, the handling is unbelievable. It uh, turns in, I believe, 30, 36 feet so it's of a 36 uh, foot. Turn, okay. turning circle, which, when, when you're operating in an urban setting is a great advantage. Uh, let's take a look in the, uh, the inside. Okay. I'll follow you. Okay. Uh, going up to the front. Well, we want to talk about these translucent roofs. Uh, oh, for translucent <laughs> roofs are, okay. are very good. They okay. save on interior lighting. Yep. But uh, they're they're not that uncommon. Okay. A lot of okay. vehicles have them. Okay. But uh, it's a good feature. It's a nice feature, and it saves power. Should I sit down here next to you? Or? Sure, why okay. not? And then you could get a feel for how good the visibility is 
up front. Uh, these are mirrors that I was speaking about. They are European style right now, but uh, they can very easily be swapped out. Uh, we drove up here in 80 degree, fairly dry day uh, in the low 80s. With the windows open, no air conditioning. Uh, mainly because this is still a developmental vehicle, but it can be ordered with air conditioning. Okay. Uh, the controls are very simple and straightforward. When you it's got a magnetic switch to uh, Activate the vehicle. Oh, that's cool. Maybe there's a lock on it or something. Or maybe I'm just... There we go. Okay. And oh. now the vehicle has activated. All right. And the key can be set aside. Uh, and here we are. This gauge will tell you when you're in... Re say, Paul, did you get it going or not? I got it going. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> this gauge will tell you when you're in regenerative braking mode. Okay. And driving up here, um, those of you who know the Chicagoland mm -hmm. area, uh, coming up Mannheim Road and River Road, I was able to control vehicle speed very well with just using the throttle, backing off when I needed to brake. And the electronics just switch the energy, take the energy of motion, the kinetic energy of the vehicle, and use it to charge the battery system, which extends the range of the vehicle. Um, very easy, very simple, very intuitive, and after just a second or, or two of driving, really it's that quick, uh, you learn to control vehicle speed almost without the brake at all. The brake, of course, is always there for emergency purposes. So even I could drive this thing? I'm sure you could. Right off the bat? Yep. Never driven an electric vehicle before, much and less an electric utility vehicle. I don't see why not. All righty. Maybe if you ask nicely, you will like <laughs> Okay. Um, that's about it. I'll, you know, I'll know more as I research it more. This opportunity to do a test drive kind of came up suddenly. And, um, you know, here we are with the uh, E-Star and uh, another star in uh, Navistar's uh, galaxy, you might say. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's... A very surprising, interesting, uh, easy to drive, easy to learn vehicle. And although most people will not be utilizing it round the clock, it can be uh, configured with the two batteries for a 15 minute turnaround, and then you come out with a fully charged battery. Uh, to use whatever you want to use it for. Okay. That's it? That's it. Well, thank you very much, Paul, for coming out today. No, always. Okay. Whenever I can. <laughs>